Watch Me Code, episode 14. In any mature programming language, you're going to find a series of things that people do over and over again, typically referred to as either idioms or often as patterns. We'll jump right into the code and look at the registry pattern in JavaScript. We'll see what it takes to get a very basic implementation off the ground. We'll take a look at some of the problems that this basic implementation has. We'll see a more robust implementation that can be reused easily and we'll look at ways that this pattern can be used to create other patterns, such as events, like I mentioned. Using a variable instead of a hard-coded string allows me to do more interesting things as well. For example, I can add a function here that allows me to register a name and a value on this object. Of course, there's other ways to get the value out as well. And then I can replace the variable with the function. The most common use of this method is in for loops when we're iterating over all of the attributes on a given object. This allows us to do work with the values that are found on the object and not on the prototype. This means that we can have functions and methods and attributes on a prototype, and we can still iterate over the attributes on the individual object without having to worry about the prototype. And as you can probably guess, replacing that attribute on an object means that we can't call that as a function. Once I have all of this in place, I can modify the code below that's using the registry to create a new registry instance, call the register method on the new registry instance, and then call the getValue method on that registry instance as well. Once I log this value to the screen and head back over to my browser, you can see that everything does work as it did before. I'm going to keep the two functions that I've defined in place, but I'm going to get rid of the switch statement. And in its place, I'm going to put a new registry instance. Once I have that in place, I'm going to register each of these functions with the value that they were previously associated with inside of the switch statement. So what I'm going to do instead is start by trying to retrieve the value from the registry for this given event name. I'm then going to check that value to see if I actually found any handlers. If I did not find any handlers in there for the given event name, I'm going to create a new array and assign it to the handlers, and then I'm going to register this new array in the registry using the event name that was passed in. So here you can see a simple example of using the events that we just set up. I've added an on method and I've registered an event handler for a given event name, and I've called a trigger method to trigger the event. Now we don't actually have the trigger method in place yet, so let's go ahead and put that in place before we try to run this in our browser. Mm -hmm. 